In the 14 years since the STAR Center was created, we have grown dramatically. STAR began with just one person, and we have grown to become a team of 10 caring individuals who truly focus on the needs of our learners. And our learners focus on the needs of our patients, their families, and the community we all so faithfully serve. Our team of dedicated simulation educators, specialists, and technicians have directly impacted over 200,000 learners using simulation as a teaching and learning tool. The Star Center team designs simulated and immersive experiential learning scenarios, reflecting contemporary clinical practice. And our center reflects a virtual inpatient and outpatient facility that replicates the patient and family experience from the beginning of life to the end of life. And this in turn has created a culture of learning that aligns with the strategic mission of our organization to improve overall clinical outcomes while enhancing through innovation the education of our learners. We are proud to say that the STAR Center was the first internationally accredited simulation center in the city of Pittsburgh. There are approximately 250 worldwide accredited simulation centers and the STAR Center stands next to the most elite. Welcome to the STAR Center. Hi, I'm Nicole Cooper. I'm here at the entrance to the STAR Center. We are located in the School of Nursing building right across the street from West Penn Hospital. This is a badge access building, so if you have your AHN ID badge, you can go ahead and try to swipe. If that doesn't let you in the building, your next step would be to hit for the receptionist. Help you. Hi, I'm here for a STAR Center course. Hi, come on in. Thank you. Once you get into the building, we're gonna have you step over here to the sign-in sheet. I'm gonna sign in here in the lobby. And then we'll go and check out the schedule screen. Here's where you'll find STARS schedule for the day. Locate your course name to find your room. We also do have a lactation room available on the second floor in room 219. Hi, my name is Teresa Justice and I am the Director of Clinical Simulation here at STAR Center. I am excited to take you on a tour of our simulation facilities. Let's start here on the first floor. As you come into 119, the first room can be used as a multi-purpose room. We use this as a pre-briefing and debriefing area, as well as we set our simulation low fidelity task trainers in there, such as our IV arms, and we can do skill sessions in here depending on the class, so it's a very flexible room for us. It's our computer lab. So lots of computers in here for students to do um, their virtual training. Um, there is capability in here. We do have a podium. We can have projector in here. So if part of the class requires any type of lecturing, they can do that in this room as well. And our board up here is a whiteboard. So for teaching purposes, the instructor can use it. So again, we do have computers in here for any online learning that needs to occur. We have standardized computer with projector and speakers and a large TV to do any type of presentations that are needed, as well as sink for hand washing. Um, and then we do have computer storage in here for some of our laptops that we have within the facility. We also at times can bring some of our task trainers in here and expand from the center room and do some low fidelity simulation training in here as well. So now we are on the first floor in one of our standardized classrooms. And in this classroom, we have the ability to have computers for any type of virtual training that are needed. In some of our classrooms, they are desktop, but we do have portable laptops that can be placed in every room. We have standardized whiteboards for communication and anything the facilitators may need to place on them. Towards the front, we have a podium. The podium has microphone and computer. The computer is connected to internet. It has Zoom capabilities for any type of meeting that needs to be done. And as well as it's connected to the speakers, 
on the front wall so that everybody in these rooms can hear clearly. Um, as you can see, uh, we have a large screen to view any type of presentation and that's connected to the um, projector in the main part of the ceiling. Our rooms are controlled through unit air conditioners, so to keep our learners comfortable while they're in their training environments. And this is our simulated ambulance. The simulated ambulance is standard issue size um, for our ambulance. It is equipped with the um, proper equipment that our City of Pittsburgh EMS providers have. There is a patient monitor as well as a computer that corresponds to whatever simulator is in here. The back left-hand side of the wall, you will see a control panel that turns on the lights and sirens um, of the ambulance as well as having um, of the ability to use the um, walkie-talkie for reporting. What's unique about this room, this is open for our residents that, and physicians that need it. It has 24-hour access, so when somebody wants to use it, we give them an introduction to it in a standardized PowerPoint that talks, um, uh, reviews how the equipment works, but there's also a keypad and they get the code to this, so they can access this anytime that fits their schedules. And when you first come in, we do have a sign-in sheet. So if it is after hours, we do know who came um, and use the equipment. We have a GI and Bronc mentor, which is done, of course, by 3D Systems. And this trainer allows for a touch screen, as well as easily accessible instructions and how-tos for each individual student to come in and practice their skills that wouldn't be practiced on a mannequin and needs to be practiced digitally. Over here is our laparoscopic skills module, very much the same. Uh, we have interchangeable tools, however, instead of an interchangeable faceplate. And we also have access to a camera here that can be used during some of the modules that are on the trainer itself. Our Angio Mentor is very much like the other two you've already seen, except it allows for a little bit less replacement of tools, but a wider range of programmable tools that can be used with this trainer. We do have a table that can be used for any type of pre-briefing discussion if there's a physician and resident in here for training, as well as we do keep a copy of the PowerPoint that we give them talking about how you log into each one of these devices. And we also keep our standardized evaluations in here for them as well. This is our one of our large simulation rooms. Um, we do have in every simulation room um, sharps containers and PPE equipment for safety. There's hand sanitizers that do work and use. Um, we have communication boards that facilitators can customize um, and these are standard to our hospital network. In this room there's a lot of procedural equipment, trays, equipment you will see both in a trauma bay and in an ICU. Our crash cards here are simulation crash cards. They replicate the AHN clinical crash cards. And then moving back, we have a ventilator. So this is one of our ventilators we keep down here. Um, you will see when it's not for human use, the stickers are on it. These things are checked in as well by our biomed. All of our clinical equipment does replicate what is used in the hospital. And on the back of our wall, these are our standard headboard. In all our simulation rooms that we have, we have a headboard that has oxygen, we have suction capability, and multiple outlets that we can plug in, um, our IV pumps, our ventilators, whatever is needed. And the last thing on the back wall to see is we do have patient care monitors. So depending on whatever simulator is in here, we can connect to it and make sure that our learners have access to vital signs um, and anything that corresponds to the simulation. When you first come into our sim lab, I'm going to just direct you over to the left hand side. We do have our safety equipment. So this is where we house our, um, our simulation center AED that is checked through our biomed and all of our, um, all of our team members have our CPR certification. As you walk into the main sim lab, this is a very large bay. It can hold five plus different simulators in beds, depending on the course or what we're teaching that day. This is also a multi purposeable room. We do keep a while down here for computer documentation if we need to. Behind you, this large meeting table area, again, is multi purposeable We have used this for pre-briefing. We've used it for debriefing sessions. We also take a variety of our low fidelity task trainers, and you can do skill stations here as well. This is a working sink, so for, for hand hygiene, making sure uh, with all the COVID-19 restrictions, 
we are able to have hand washing available in our main sim lab. We're gonna go over and um, review our big simulation rooms. On the doors, we do have PPE equipment, so gloves, or if this situation would call gowns, all that is available on the door, just like it would be in the hospital setting. Moving along to the back head well, we have a functioning monitor. The monitor is connected to the simulator. We can pull up vital signs on there. It does have speakers so that anything coming from the main control lab can be heard in here for our learners. We have a functioning phone that will ring into our main simulation lab if they were required to call a doctor or call a code. You can pick up and it will ring. The next side is our, um, our control room. And this is the two-way glass so we can see into these rooms. When we come into our control room, we have a lot of um, simulators, which you will see. So we wanted to keep a way to keep the laptops that are connected to them organized. So this is our leap station. When you come over to the control center that looks into the main sim lab, there has a telephone that we can answer that call from. It has the computer that is connected to the simulator. And as you can see the video on there, you can actually see right into that room through the computer, through the AV system. We have speakers where we can either do through headphones if the individual instructor just wants to hear what's going on, or it can be, we can take that off and the whole room can hear it. If we want to communicate to the learners in the room, we can go ahead and connect the microphone on and we can speak to them at any time that we feel that we need to. And on this side, this is a mirror image of what we just reviewed um, before. So the communication center and then the also a large sim room that we can use and customize according to the scenarios. Welcome to our second floor and our galaxy wing, right this way. The Galaxy Wig is made to be a simulated nursing unit. The first several rooms here on the left-hand side are rooms that mimic our outpatient arenas. This particular one right now is set up for EKG training. But as you will see as we go through this tour, our rooms can be interchanged and a variety of different cash trainers can be put into these outpatient areas for different types of training. These call bell lights do work. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit one, you see it turn on and you can see the lights in the hallway when they're when they're actually alarming. Moving back into the hallway we do have two large simulation rooms that you did see downstairs that have a control room. We have two up here as well. We're going to head into the control room in here. This control room connects the two rooms with the two-way mirrors and just like downstairs we do have computer systems with AV connected for videoing. Right now it's set up for an inpatient, but we do have the ability to make it look like an outpatient room as well. Standardized head wall again is in this room with the communication system, the oxygen and suction. As well, if we need, we do have a patient monitor. So if the simulator requires vital signs to be up on the monitor, we are able to do that um, as well as our standard communication board. We're gonna show you our apartment. So this is our simulated apartment. It is used for a variety of different courses. There are um, distinct areas, so living room, dining room, we do have a kitchen, bedroom, and then bathroom area. In this room, the sink does work and have running water. The refrigerator works, but the stove does not turn on. And the shower and the washer and dryer are, sim are simply simulated props. This room also can be used for us as a lactation room. So we designated that in here. If anybody needs it, this room is, is used for that. And in between the staff offices, we do have classroom space. So we're gonna go into our balcony classroom. This is one of our larger classrooms. As you saw earlier, this is a standard classroom with AV setup. This is a, a unique space. We can use this space, obviously, as a very large um, conference center, uh, but it also is used as a classroom. So there is a TV, AV, webcam in here, so we can run classes, we can do Zooms in here. So we use this for many different reasons throughout the center. Now we're gonna welcome you into our OB and NICU area. In this area, we do have um, NICU warmers um, and different simulators can go in there. They all are attached and have um, monitors as well. So we can pull up vital signs with every different simulator that can be in here. On the head wall, we do have uh, connections for oxygen and suction on both sides. 
and we also have another resuscitation area. We have two warmers in here. We can have a variety of different mannequins, as well as our low fidelity simulators are kept in here for training. So in this area, we do have um, a labor and delivery bed with an OB simulator in it. Um, as you move towards your right, uh, we do have a patient monitor that is available to put vital signs, contractions, anything connected to the simulator. We do have an infant warmer there. So once birthing occurs, resuscitation of baby can happen in the warmer. As well as we do have carts in here that contain the most used OB equipment for birthing and procedures, which are labeled. Um, there is sharps containers, extra lighting sources and PPE gear that may be needed for any type of procedure and training. We do have a secondary OB bed here. There is not a simulator in it right now because we do have simulators out for training, but we can run two OB simulations in here, fully equipped. Take you back to our Voyager wing. As we go back in the wing, we do have signage again so that facilitators and learners know where they're going, as well as an electronic list of the courses back here in the Voyager wing for easy access. Um, we do have ladies rooms in this area. This is the first classroom is our computer lab in here in the Voyager wing. And this is our standard computer lab where we can do Zoom, we can do virtual learning, each computer does have headsets if needed for individual training. This leads right into our largest classroom. This is our Voyager classroom. It's our standard classroom, so AV capabilities, projector. Um, the front does have a screen that pulls down as well as a whiteboard for instructor use. Right now, this learning lab is set up for different pediatric, pediatric task trainer learning. So a variety of different mannequins are in here and some equipment. This is a standard patient simulation room for us in the Voyager wing. It does have the, the bed, different mannequins can go in. In this space in the OR, we do have an operating room table that we can put a variety of different mannequins on. It is connected to a gas, anesthesia gas machine as well as an anesthesia medication supply cart. On the back to make it more real, we do have a curtain that simulates different OR settings. We can move that curtain out where it is now, or we can push it back because there is a door behind there that leads back into the Voyager classroom. So the OR, there's a lot of different procedures um, and trays that we have. So we store them back here for easy access and use. But we also have the control system, as you can see, it looks right into the OR. Facilitators can sit back here, there's speakers to here. We're not gonna show you our mobile simulation vans. We have two identical vans here at Star Center. As you can see in these vans, we have uh, locking mechanisms that the, our technicians and specialists can put the simulation stretchers in and ensure they are safely loaded. This particular van can either be used for one or a two person stretcher. Here at our simulation center, mobile, mobile units are very important. We have hospitals that are 10 minutes away, and then we also have hospitals that are two hours away. So the mobile vans allow us to serve everybody within our network. Vans have insurance on them and that are covered through our uh, corporate network. We are able to personalize the experience to meet the needs of your education. Feel free to contact us to learn more.